Hi Charlie, where are we? What are we doing? Oh, we're here at Westminster Safari Parks Ferry and Ice Age exhibit. It's such an exciting time and I wonder if I could interest you in coming to have a little look with me. Absolutely. Fantastic, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so Charlie, who are we here with now? Uh, so this is Emil, he's our Embolotherium. Yeah. He's a lovely character. Now an interesting fact about a meal is that the long uh, horn on the end of his nose yeah. is actually not solid. They were hollow. Scientists do believe that they would have used that to create strange noises. And a little bit of disagreement over what the noise would be used for. They could perhaps be used to scare away predators or to attract a partner. Yeah. <laughs> they could sit around the campfire and sort of have a sing song. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? A bit like a ukulele. <laughs> So this is Phoebe, she's one of our Therapyrrhachus, or Terra Birds. She's an absolute delight. We've been making sure we train her really well, using positive reinforcement for when she's well behaved. That's good to hear. So we use clickers and lots of whistles, and she's doing really well and settling nicely to the exhibit. <laughs> Hi, Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> now, how does she feel being stationed there? Because just over here, Who's this that we've got? This over here is our Intelodont or Hell Pig. Now this guy here, his name's actually Henry. He's a little bit of a cheeky one and they are in a bit of competition with each other. They like all the same foods, but that's okay. It's a friendly rivalry and it really yeah. does stem excellent, um, excellent friendships. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. You know your animals very well. <laughs> oh, we've got to make sure we look after them as keepers and make sure they're all happy, yeah. healthy in there. Make sure they behave themselves. <laughs> Charlie, this is a Smilodon. It is indeed. Okay, now looking at those teeth, is there extra dental care involved with this one? Yeah, well our keepers do have to come out two or three times a day, three times if they have lots of food in that day, give them a nice scrub. It's um, a messy job, <laughs> but a rewarding one, because you do get to give them a little tickle behind the ears <laughs> afterwards. Belford here, he's the most playful. When you try to find him to brush his teeth or be hiding in the bushes, he'll be looking for me or jump out behind you. It does give the keepers a bit of a fright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is pretty well behaved normally. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's okay today, he's been very well behaved he today. Is. He's, he's behaving himself. I think he knows he's being watched. <laughs> Look at that smile. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and with these animals that haven't been around for so long, are humans a surprise to them when they come round? Well, to be honest, Belford had been absolutely fine, but Thomas, he's somewhere in the bushes, but he's a little bit shy. We're hoping he'll come out to see everyone in the next few weeks, but at the moment he's still hiding a little bit. As for Laura, I think you may have seen her as you came in, she's uh, not scared at all. <laughs> Well, she seems quite territorial, Laura does. Oh, there's no need to worry. All of our animals are very well trained and they're ever so friendly. As long as you don't touch them, they won't touch you. <laughs> our train keepers do like to give them nice belly rubs if they're well behaved, though. <laughs> Is that visitors or the animals now? Oh! <laughs> oh strictly animals, I'm afraid, guys. <laughs> Giant sloths. They're actually as large as elephants. Wow. She's ever so fluffy and cute. <laughs> Definitely a favourite amongst the keepers. Make sure she gets lots of pride food. <laughs> and that's a glyptodon. Has she, has she got a name? She's called Button. Oh, Button. Yeah. <laughs> She's cute as. Aww. <laughs> So, Charlie, there are some animals here that we would recognise absolutely as they are today, That's aren't there? That's absolutely right. We've got several animals, such as Komodo dragons and jaguars, that you guys might recognise. Of course, you will have to keep your eyes peeled to spot them, because yeah. the twins, as we call our jaguars, they are a little bit shy, and they uh, do tend to skulk around a little bit. I wonder if anyone can see any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have a look. We'll, we'll check it on. out. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers, but we'll check it out. <laughs> Oh, they're very good at hide and speak, hide and seek jaguars. Yeah, uh, hide and speak. That, that would be a good trick <laughs> to teach them with your positive training. <laughs> hide and speak. Where are you? I'm here. <laughs> Marco. Uh, yes. <laughs> Perhaps that'd be a good name for them. <laughs> Marco, Marco Polo. <laughs> Oh. And there's oh. a Komodo dragon as well. We do. We do have a Komodo dragon too. He's an absolute delight. 
Um, he's another one that's a little bit shy. He does like to stick to the undergrave that way. He can come out and see you when he'd like to, yeah. rather yeah. than always being there. Oh, right. But <laughs> you allow them you allow them that space? We do, we allow them the space. Uh, he may pop out onto the path occasionally to do mind your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've been warned. <laughs> We're walking through the undergrowth and we've come across some more mammals, not dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these so guys are, these? are absolutely fabulous. These are our Macrochenia. Uh, we've got Mo and we've got Molly. These guys are a great pairing. They're always together because they get a little bit lonely if they're on their own. Mm. And we don't make, it's really important to us here at Westman Safari Park just to make sure our animals are happy. So if they're a social animal, we'll have a group of them to make sure they're yeah. back in well socialised. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's important that all of the guests come through to say hello to them too. They've grown used to human interaction over the past few weeks and uh, they'd love you to come and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, Charlie, we're here at the heart of the Ice Age exhibit, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous turning my back on these animals, but I'm assured it's okay, so we'll see. <laughs> okay, so tell us what animals we've got here. Okay, so we're surrounded by some fantastic animals from the Ice Age. We've got woolly mammoths, which are an absolute classic staple. These guys are so friendly. They're social animals, so we've got a whole herd to keep them nice and happy. We've got mummy just over the far side of her baby. We've got Daddy just next to us. And just behind, we've got the auntie. They're fantastic creatures. Our bull is absolutely huge. Yes. You should hear when he walks, it makes the earth rumble. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And just to the sides of our mammoths, you've got some Elasmotherium. These guys are like woolly rhinoceros. They're actually pegged as the original unicorn due to that characteristic horn of theirs. Yes. These guys are all herbivores though, so they'd much rather eat a super-sized salad than any of you guys for their dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. It's reassuring. <laughs> okay, so to talking about the, the food, mm -hmm. have you had to specially grow plants for them? Because I'm assuming their natural diet may not be around still. Um, some of the plants that were around that have actually survived to this very day, some yeah. of the deciduous trees, etc. And most grasses are moderately similar. However, we're feeding them a more varied diet these days. We've actually given them some root vegetables such as carrots and parsnips and even the occasional swede if they're well behaved. <laughs> it's ever so good for their teeth. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> I think he's getting a bit jealous. Yes. Of all, he's not getting all the attention. <laughs> Wants to be asked some questions. Yes, that's the trouble. See, it's not just herbivores we've got in this area. We've also got some carnivores. So we've got to make sure we get their dietary requirements absolutely perfect. We've got to make sure they're nice and healthy and they don't get a little bit peckish and accidentally start nibbling on our mammoths. That wouldn't be good at all. No. So instead, we've got to make sure we feed them their favourite snacks, which range from fish fingers. <laughs> Two lots and lots of tasty bits of chicken and it's absolutely fantastic. We just make sure their diet is really well balanced. Yeah, yeah. It's incredibly important to us. So yeah. we've got a couple of different carnivores here. We've got dire wolves and these were again social animals that lived in packs. So it's really important that keepers spend lots of time with them to make sure they're acclimatised really well to the environment. And it's important that guests feel comfortable and safe to come and say hello to them too. <laughs> Gorgeous. So, I mean, have you, the behavioural side of it, have you had to sort of just make the, you know, write the book as you've gone along because there's not many other zoos, I would imagine, with these kind of animals? No, you're absolutely right. But here at West Midland Safari Park, we've managed to use and draw from experiences looking after other creatures out on our safari, which is a four mile long drive free full of all sorts of creatures. And using those experiences, we've been able to help train all of these animals and develop a perfect diet to help them grow and be healthy and happy. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> so anybody worried about them, they're, they're, they're okay, they're well cared for, you've got them sorted, haven't you? Yeah, there's no need to worry about any of our animals. They are our absolute priority and these guys are so happy. Look at how cheerful our Lasmophorium is. He's having a little look at you there. You can basically see a twinkle in his eyes. <laughs> Excellent. And I mean, they've got a challenge now because coming from the Ice Age, and now it's, I mean, today we've got beautiful weather. So how do you cope with that? It's absolutely glorious. We use lots of different enrichment techniques to keep our animals happy here at the park, ranging from making ice lollies for them to using huge super-sized fans. <laughs> so long as our animals are happy and healthy, we're absolutely fine. We even have a nice cool ice cave that we can take them into to keep them cool if they do get too warm outside. Yeah, excellent. You thought of everything, Charlie. So how have you enjoyed working with these animals? Oh, it's an absolute delight. 
delight and the real privilege to work with such fantastic creatures. I couldn't have in my wildest dreams ever imagined that I'd get the opportunity to work with these fantastic beasts. The other thing that we've got you've got to contend with here is the volcano. So tell me about that, Charlie. I know it's an absolute phenomenon. It's the largest volcano we've ever seen in the Midlands and it does make a lot of rumbling noises. It can be pretty intense but there's not to worry because we have an on-site geologist called Dr Nock who's a real specialist and he's keeping an eye on the situation just to make sure everything is absolutely fine. We're 100% certain it's completely safe for guests to be in the area and our animals aren't concerned about it at all. Excellent. <laughs> See, I, I th with that rumbling, I thought it was your tummy. I thought you were ready for lunch. <laughs> well, <laughs> just like our animals, our keepers, we do need lots of snacks and lots of naps to keep us happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're right, I feel like David Attenborough now. We're right here with the dire wolf. Okay, so, I mean, t tell me, Charlie, do I have to keep my voice down here or, or is he okay? He, he's generally okay because he's still quite new to us. We're, we're taking it nice and easy, so we're very lucky to be this close to him. But there's not to worry. Loud noses shouldn't spook him too much. He's a brave lad, Dylan. Dylan the dire wolf. Aww. Those teeth even harder to brush than uh, some of yes. the taller animals, I'm afraid. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get a finger stuck in there by mistake. <laughs> it's, it's bad enough brushing our dog's teeth, but my goodness, a dire wolf's teeth. <laughs> oh, not to worry, his temperament's fantastic. And he does love to have his fur brushed out. Yeah. With the uh, summer coming and it being in full swing, we're going to make sure we lose that winter coat. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, will he fetch? Oh, well, at the moment he doesn't, but we're hoping with a little bit more training, continue with that positive reinforcement, bit of clicker training too, maybe. We can perhaps get him to bring his favourite ball back. <laughs> maybe if we give him some chicken nuggets as treats. I think so. Oh, that would work for most people. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would work for most of our keepers. <laughs> He's an absolute delight. These guys have, of course, found him in America and um, they live in large packs in the yeah. wild. Now, at the moment, we've just got the one, just Dylan. But that's okay because he's used to living on his own. So he's been brought up soli in solitude. But that's okay because we're starting to acclimatise him to get used to our other animals and the rest of the guests. And he's really coming out of his shell. <laughs> he's beautiful. So Charlie, it's 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 really chilly down here, isn't it? It's so getting a little bit nippy in the heart of the ice cave now, that's the trouble. See, what happens a while ago, our famous geologist, Dr. Nock, he discovered the strange volcano and he got a little bit close to a bit of research there. He discovered the ice cave, he discovered a time portal. He went all the way back through time, he found a smilodon first and he thought, hold on a second, we're going to be able to bring back more animals and really it's going to be fantastic. All of these animals coming back to West Midland Safari Park excellent for research purposes, excellent for conservation, and it's going to be a fantastic opportunity to learn even more about these wonderful creatures. But he then discovered this time portal, and the children can actually go through it. It's completely safe. We've checked it out. They go through this door, they vanish, and a few moments later, they reappear at this door. Wow. Fantastic. And don't worry, if there's blue lights, it means it's completely safe. Okay. So if they fancy a bit of, bit of time travel, Absolutely. come along to my Definitely. Thing. Lots of adventure to find here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Laura, tell me about this exhibit because it's amazing. So how long did it take you to put this all together? So it's taken about two years from conceptualisation up until the build um, when we opened it on the 30th of March. Um, so two years it's taken lots of time to plan, to design, we've got in-house in uh, creators that have helped with that as well. Um, and then it took a total of six months to actually build. Um, lots of hard work, especially in the snow, we've had three or four bouts of snow as well. So that's delayed things, um, so we wanted to try and get it ready for everyone to come and see as soon as possible. Um, but no, it's taken quite a long time and we wanted it to be um, something that people could follow on from Land of the Living Dinosaurs yes. that opened um, in 2015. So. Um, it was something that we wanted to kind of continue the journey and ensure that people could see kind of the concept of land of living dinosaurs and then follow on from their extinction onto a new time period which is the Cenozoic era which is what is represented in this exhibit. It's beautiful. How ironic that snow... D excuse me! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we get involved. Yeah. <laughs> but how ironic that snow delayed Ice Age exhibit. 
Yes, it is quite <laughs> ironic, really. Um, I mean, we've kind of used that to our advantage, really, and kind of played on the whole ice age um, element, especially with our ice cave that we have as well. So we've kind of said, you know, this uh, big freeze that's taking over the country, gripping the country, is down to our ice age. You know, we've created this, so, you know, it's worked out quite well for us in yeah, the end. Yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> so it all looks absolutely gorgeous and really picturesque. So, I mean, that you must have spent a long time looking at it from every angle and making sure it does look so beautiful. Yeah, so um, we kind of, we've got three distinctive zones, plus our volcano and our ice cave area. And we wanted to make sure that, that was, they were really separate and really obvious that they were separate time periods. Um, so we've made sure that all of our plants and shrubbery, etc., really mirror that and make sure that people understand the different time um, elements that they're walking through. So it has taken quite a bit of um, standing back, having a look, and then going back again and, and rejigging a few things. Um, but we've got a, quite a big team that, that we work with here um, and, we, and outside agencies as well. So we've had um, lots of input and it's, you know, it's worked out really well. Everyone's, we've had some really positive feedback, so yeah. we're really pleased with what we've got. It's beautiful. The undergrowth is gorgeous. It's, it is lush and dense as you walk through it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, especially sort of the first um, zone where we've got, um, it's quite a few million years ago, that zone. Um, so that's, you know, the floral vegeta vegetative um, area. Um, and that's really what we're trying to aim for. And it's we've kind of used natural um, trees and shrubbery as well. So we've kept that area quite, you know, as it was before. So we've kind of used quite a few elements that, that were already there. Yeah. And it's, I mean, we've had great fun this morning, and it is a really fun exhibit. But also, there is some serious science in it, isn't there? And you've got some real fossils. Yes, we have got real fossils. We have um, a megatherium tooth, so that's um, a giant ground sloth. Um, we've also got some um, volcanic rock as well that we found, um, and that's from quite a few million years ago. Um, so there is lots of elements um, that we want to, you know, educate guests as well. Um, really important as well that these animals, most of them became extinct. Um, due to a lot of human hunting um, when you know early man came around um, came into you know existence so we kind of really want to get that message across that yes these animals are now extinct but we want to continue that um, conservation message to ensure that the animals um, that we have now don't become extinct and yeah. doesn't happen the same with them as well yeah. absolutely learn from history and let's not do it again let's look after what we've got exactly yeah it's a really important message especially to our younger our next generation as well we want to inspire future conservationists really so it's a really important message that we kind of try and and put the whole way through the exhibit and especially on the way out as you leave as well so we've got um sort of an early, early human cave that you walk through and you see lots of conservation messages as you leave um to how we can protect our planet as well